For the first time on the show, we've got a power couple coming out to talk about their background in sports. We're talking baseball, softball, and how that actually translates into their regular life. We're talking military, uh, marriage, and their business. You're not going to want to miss this episode of the Game Time Guru. So, what time is it? Game Time Guru! If you're sick of the mainstream sports outlets, well, so was I. So I started my own show. I'm Shane Larson, and this is the Game Time Guru. It's different than other talk shows. I'm providing a panoramic view on sports so you can see them through a different lens. So buckle up and let's go. What's up, everybody? Welcome out to yet another episode of the Game Time Guru Podcast. Hope you're having a great Friday. This is when this episode is launching. And today, like I said, we've got a couple on the show. It's the first time I brought on a couple. And I can't believe I waited this long, but I'm glad that I did because they do not disappoint. You're going to want to listen to their story. We're talking baseball and softball. Uh, John was in the military. Uh, we're talking about how sports have helped him with that transition as well as their marriage. And they're actually expecting a baby right now. So that's kind of a cool thing, how, how sports help them work together as a team as well as their business venture that you're going to hear about today. You're going to love this. So make sure to check it out. Before we get started, I want to make sure I go through a couple of the housekeeping items. As you guys know, the best thing to do for me, if you want to pay me back, is just leave me a review. Whichever whichever device you're listening on right now, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you can get notified of all the, the next episodes out. And you can always go back and listen to some of the other interviews we've had, awesome topics we've discussed on the show. Um, and leave me a review. You can give me you know a five-star review or four-star review. If it's a one-star review, whatever you think it is, give me a review. It gives me some honest feedback. And then and actually leave a review so you can rate it and then leave me a review uh, and I can, you know, I can get the, the feedback that I need. It's helpful because when people come to search for a podcast and they see a, a podcast with a certain amount of ratings or reviews, they'll actually go through those and see if it's a valid podcast and they'll, you know, choose whether or not they want to subscribe to it. I also want to remind you guys that if you like audiobooks, which I do, um, I love audiobooks. I'm about to read one about Abraham Lincoln. It's a leadership one. I heard, of, uh, heard about it from my uh, friend over at work. His name is Robbie Summers. And I wanted to hear, like he was talking about how he loves, you know, leadership books. And I'm like, ah, man, but they all sound the same. Well, then he started talking about this one called Team of Rivals about Abraham Lincoln. And he kind of gave me this little rundown of it. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll eat my words. That sounds actually really interesting. So I'm going to get the audiobook version of it because it's easier for me to listen to. That's why I listen to podcasts. I can go to the gym. I can stay at work. I can just listen to it and, and absorb the information. So I'm going to get this audiobook. If you guys like audiobooks, you can go to Audible. It's a great place to get audiobooks, and you can get a free trial using my affiliate link for that. Um, just go to audio, um, audio sorry, audibletrial.com slash the game time guru. Sorry, audibletrial.com slash the game time guru <laughs> again, and make sure you sign up. So it's a free trial. You can get your audiobooks there. Um, helps me, helps you. It's awesome. And one other item of business is if you want to get paid to listen to the podcast, there's a new app called Podcoin, and the Game Time Guru podcast is on Podcoin. So if you go to Podcoin, it's free. You can literally get paid. They pay you in like points, and then you can you know redeem them for gift cards and such. So every minute you listen to the podcast, if you're going to listen to the show, you might as well get paid to do so. You know what I mean? So Podcoin's a good place to go. It's cool to see how technology and everything is you know evolving, especially around podcasts. They've got so many apps now that. Um, you know, incentivize people to listen to podcasts because there's so many good shows out there that provide such good information and motivation um, that they're trying to find ways to make it accessible. And there's really no reason you shouldn't be listening to podcasts because they're phenomenal, especially this one, Game Time Guru. That's my show and I love it and you guys are going to love it. So uh, I appreciate you guys that are listening. And if you're new to the show, awesome. Hit that subscribe button um, so you can catch all the other episodes as well. Guys, I'm super stoked. I'm going to stop talking so you guys can listen to our interview with Sam and John. They were awesome, um, crushed it, and they've got a great message to share with you guys. So I hope you enjoy it. All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome out to the Game Time Guru podcast. As you guys heard in the introduction, I'm Shane Larson, your host. I'm here with Sam and John, a power couple. It's the first time I've had a couple on the on the show, and I'm excited to have them on here, talk about their experience in sports, how it's kind of translated into their life, their marriage, their business, and everything. So let's kind of say what's up to Sam and John. We're going to go ladies first. So Sam, can you say what's up and kind of tell us a little bit about you? Give me one sentence recap of who you are. Ooh, Hey everyone, I'm Sam. I am a military wife and I was diagnosed with celiac disease and life is life. I'm pregnant now, so that's awesome. Congratulations. All right. All right. So John, what about yourself, man? Hey, what's up guys? First off, thank you for having us here. It's awesome being on your show. Um, to sum it up, four years of college baseball, almost went pro, decided to join the Marines, obviously because of 9-11. And uh, now we're here running our own business together, helping fellow veterans. 
That is awesome. We're going to kind of get into that a little bit more. I just want to hear a little bit more about your message. One thing I don't even think I told you guys is uh, my family's a military family. Like I didn't serve, uh, but my, my uncles, my grandparents, everyone, that, like we have a pretty big military background. I have a major respect for the military. Um, in fact, my dad, he, he has a side business for reloading ammunition. Um, and we just kind of donated to the ride for 22 that just happened this past weekend here where they help, you know, veterans who've, uh, suffer with suicide uh, here in our city in, in Boise. So they did the ride for 22. And so we kind of were a part of that. So anyways, mad respect for you guys. That's my point there. Uh, Cause I love the military and have a mad respect because my family's military family. So um, here's the thing. We're going to tie this into sports first. So, so we're going to start here again with ladies first, Sam, um, before you got here and, and, and run the business and being a military wife and all this, Talk about your sports background. You kind of had a diverse background. You didn't just stick with one sport. You kind of were an all-sport athlete until you got into college. Can you give me a little background on that? Yeah, so when I was back in high school, so I grew up with sports since I was, I mean, a toddler out of the womb. I was playing sports. My dad was my coach for the longest time, and I have a younger sister who I also played with. And so my parents always had me active. I played uh, soccer really young softball, I got it. So t-ball. And then uh, I also, as I got into high school, started swimming. So high school, my big two main sports were softball and swimming. And then from there, I transitioned and got a scholarship to play for um, Columbia College in Columbia, South Carolina. So I played softball there. Oh, wow. Okay. So tell me real quick. So we have swimming and softball. I kind of want to know so softball is more of a team sport. Swimming's, I mean, you can call it a team sport, but it is an individual sport. It's kind of like boxing. That's where I get my, my background was coming from. Um, you know, you have your team. Yeah, you have your team goals, but you are it's an individual sport. I want to know what you learned in swimming compared to softball in regards to that, like as far as one being individual and one being a team sport. Yeah, so swimming was really, as an individual, you are fighting every single like practice and every single meet to better yourself. And when you better yourself, you're bettering your team. So uh, in softball, I, I took that, I transitioned and in softball, it's like, all right, the better that I can pitch or the better that I can catch, you know, an outfield fly and not let my team down, the better I do for myself, the better I'm doing for my team. Solid. I like that a lot. And in regards to softball, so I play in like, I, I call it the dad bod softball. It's just a men's softball league. I'm I'm far past my prime in any sport for that matter. But yeah, we were, we played a game last night. Softball's no joke, man. Ours is just slow pitch, man. You can't hit the ball right. You can't judge the ball when you're in the outfield. They take weird bounces. It freaking sucks. But we're going to kind of transition over to John because that's a tough sport. So softball and then going into the baseball background, since it's kind of the same and it's similar. John, you said you almost went pro. Um, I kind of want to hear your, your, your background growing up through the baseball realm. So growing up, I played since I was three years old when I started out running the bases in the wrong direction. <laughs> um, and I grew up, my dad was my coach. Like my entire life up until going to college, my dad was my coach. And I couldn't be any more grateful for it because as the coach's son, I would get more scrutiny than anyone else on, on the team. Like that's just how it was. And I was held to a higher standard in order to earn my time. So doing that for like the first 12 years of my baseball career, it really made me ready for college and like the trial, like the trials I would go through during those four years. And I started saying that and I forgot the question. So, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Back into um, like going pro. Oh, okay. So transitioned. transitioning from what, like just playing college to like almost going pro like that, what that was like. Or? So, so talk to me a little bit about that process. Cause you said you made a decision uh, to not, I mean, essentially you made a different career decision. So what kind of was going through your mind as you were playing in the collegiate ranks? Like what was the competition like? And then like, what made that decision different for you going into uh, a different career choice? So starting out in college, and this is kind of what plays into like what happens later on in my career. High school, I was, the, I was awesome. Like, top 10% of the area. You go to college and suddenly like that's the average. <laughs> so I went from a dude throwing like 78, 80 miles an hour through a perfect game in high school, like all this other stuff. I show up and it's like, dude, 78, 80, that's slow. Like that's a batting. Oh yeah. That level. <laughs> so the first two years, it was me growing up. The first year I was trash, like giving up home runs left and right, ERA sky high. Like what is this kid doing here? I took that home, went home my sophomore year or during between my freshman and sophomore year. And that summer I blamed everyone else but myself. 
came out sophomore year, did the same crap. Went home that summer, I was like, something has to change. So I put on like 20 pounds and I started throwing a lot harder. I just, I practiced and I put all the effort into myself instead of blaming everyone else. Junior and senior year, I do really, really well. Um, and it comes for the time where I have to make a decision and do I either keep tracing this, uh, chasing this dream or do I like pack it up and pick something else? So I spent from May until September, October after graduating, of just going after it. And in my last tryout and the last time I ever played baseball, I did great. I faced nine batters. I struck seven of them out. I was sitting 90, 92 on the gun. And they're like, hey, we're going to come talk to you after this. So they do this, hey, you have nothing to worry about the rest of the weekend. You're not going to play anymore. You threw way more than anyone else did. I'm like, all right, cool. It's a good sign. End of the weekend comes around. And they're like, hey, stay back if we call your name. And my name gets called. So now everyone else is leaving. And I'm there with my dad. And I'm like, holy crap, did I just get pick, picked up for something? Like, what's going on here? I go talk to the – they all talk to us. Like, hey, here's your team. Here's your manager. They're going to fly you out to your team. This is how it's all going to play out. I'm like, all right, cool. Get in the car with my dad. Call the number. Leave voicemail, nothing. Wait an hour. Call the number again. I'm – I'm getting excited. I'm getting anxious at this point. Like, what's going on? I'm supposed to fly out soon. And uh, they pick up the phone like, hey, you're like the fifth dude to leave a similar voicemail. Like, we don't know what you're talking about. I called the dude who ran the tryout. We paid, you know, hundreds of dollars to. And uh, never called us back. And that was the last time I played baseball. What? That took a turn from what I was expecting. I'm not going to lie. I was like, wait, what? That's what I, was I had like this offer. I had everything, you know, go play on this team. And then. That was it. And you, it, you never heard back from him? No. Did you ever want to hear back from him? No, I don't care anymore. Okay. It took a long time to get over it, but at this point, the way my life turned out without baseball, it's great. I, I feel you. No, it, it happened. for sure, for sure. <laughs> now, who, here's a question. Here's a question. Who can throw faster? So, Sam underhand or John overhand? Sam, 450, dead center. <laughs> I'll, I'll go with that. John throws a baseball, but we've played co-ed soft slow pitch softball together. That, I mean, that was that's fun. a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Let's take a turn here real quick. <laughs> we get done with our game last night. We're in a men's league. My friend, my teammate says, what's the best or the easiest way to get divorced? Play co-ed softball with your wife. So, <laughs> I mean, I've been there before and, uh, Luckily, my wife didn't play with us. I, I've seen it happen. So I commend you both. But this is, this is perfect because it will kind of transition to this. You're both sports backgrounds, both have this sports mindset, and you've learned a lot of things through sports. And so it looks like you actually compete together in sports. So that's good. It teaches you a couple of things. So talk to me a little bit. I'll, I'll go back to Sam real quick. How sports, your background, um, has helped you in your marriage, I guess, in your relationship with your husband. So... Within our marriage, uh, we, we've gone through a lot after also going through the military and the things we've gone through. But uh, sports actually, when you look back, plays such a big role because you have to have this mental mindset of, again, being good for yourself and then good for your team. Well, my team has transitioned to my husband and I, and we are a team. And so the better that we do improving ourselves is we improve each other. And so it's always a like, we originally, I, I, going back, we originally, when we would battle like back and forth and oh whether an God. argument or a fight, it was just even something so stupid of like, which is harder, softball or baseball? Like his family is diehard baseball and you know, my family, it's just me and my sister and it's just him and his brother. And so we're like softball and he's like, no, it's freaking baseball. And like, it's just, it just rides out. And now it's just like, no, we just love our sports. It's just how we grew up and you know, what we did. So I definitely transitioning into marriage. It was just as, as we grow each like ourselves, we grow each other and we grow together. So it was a good, healthy competition that we con consistently were like, yeah, I want to be better. I want to win. I want to win this battle. But at the same time, it's like, there is no battle. We're not fighting against each other. We're fighting with each other, you know, for each other. So that was just, it, it just transitioned into a great marriage. I love that. I love that. Cause, um, what's interesting is <laughs> I'm going to go over to John just a second in regards to that question. But like, I think it's interesting because you both had the opportunity to play 
at the next level. So like a lot of us, we get, you know, reality hits and, and we aren't able to compete at the next level, which is college. And it doesn't matter to me. I don't care if it's a Juco, if it's a D2, if it's D1, that's the next level to me. Like you can still compete at the next level. And I think when people have that opportunity to compete at the next level in sports, it's even more life lessons that you're taught and that you can essentially transition and implement into your regular life because you start to respect sports for what they are. You're, you, you have a better team mentality. You start to understand I don't know. It's, it's just, I feel like every level you go up, the more life lessons you learn in that because you're around people like John, you kind of mentioned it earlier. Uh, that was the average. So you're actually with, you're surrounding yourself with people that are competing at a high level. And then if you go even one step further up from there, it's a very few that can get to that point. And they're even at a high level. It's almost in business where you surround yourself with positive people with one common goal, one common purpose. Um, and it kind of builds you up. So I think it's cool that you both had that opportunity to play at a higher level. Now, John, I'm going to ask you this question. What did you learn through sports? You know, that that's, uh, I mean, outside of what Sam's already said, but what that's been able to, you know, translate into your marriage. Translating into our marriage. I, it, it goes into the team again, like competing, not against each other, but for each other. And it goes so deep like into the deepest like i never thought anyone would know me as good as sam does but that's like the drive for her to love me is the drive for me to love her back and that's that's exactly it like all the other stuff you go through in a marriage like sports will prepare you for it because yeah you got to get up early you got to do all this extra stuff you got to know how to like you know be a good teammate and it kind of helped me learn how to be a good husband you know another thing i'm are you Another thing that it actually, um, that sports did now that I'm thinking about it is you learn from your coaches, like criticism and constructive criticism is huge in a marriage because you have to learn to communicate in a healthy, you know, in a healthy way. And so originally if we would, you know, Hey, like this is something we really went through is, Hey, like I cannot stand the way that you're putting the dishes in the dishwasher. And, but it wouldn't ever come out that way. I would get frustrated and really annoyed, but it was like my way of doing things, my individual, you know, swimming sport. Right. And so then transitioning into this team sport and I can't just do it my way. It's like, we have to tell each other and be constructive with one another to continue to grow. Otherwise it's just a constant battle. And again, you're not battling. Why would you battle? You have to grow together to be a team. Absolutely. And I think for me, um, on the basketball court, there were times, and I think this is what I'm going to relate this to my marriage too. Like there were times all through when we were competing, especially in like higher tournaments, like state tournaments and stuff like that. When you're playing against, you know, higher competition, you kind of, there's times in sports where you will, you're, you're personally not able to go any further, but then you look at the guy next to you, or in your case, the girl next to you and you're like, okay, like this is the, uh, I got to do it for them because I don't have anything left in the tank. So what I'm going to do is I'm pissed. I'm having a bad night. I'm having an off night. This isn't my game, but I've still got to go out there and compete because that's essentially not, it's not just for me. It's for other people too. So you kind of have that motivation. And for me, like my wife and I right now, we're going through a situation where she may or may not have her income coming in. Um, and we're building the house and we're going through, we're selling our house and building a new house and we're right in the middle of the transition. And then all of a sudden her job says, Hey, uh, you either have to come back to the office. You can't work from home anymore or you're not going to have a job. And so we're kind of, we're like, Hey, well, she may not have a job. So for me, it's like stressful. So I'm going through that. And I'm like, well, I'm not having a good day. But then I look over at her. I'm like, Hey, and I look at my little boy who's two and a half and I'm like, all right, so this is who I do it for. Like, this is where I'm going to keep grinding. This is what I'm doing this for. So you just kind of remember those things that you learned back in, in the sports days. So that's kind of my, my input on it. Now, now, John, you said something that I, <laughs> in a text message, I thought it was interesting. I hope you don't mind me quoting this, but you said that sports made Hold on. Actually, I got to quote it without like butchering what you said. So I'm going to read it off this. It's to some people, they might think this is funny. I think it's great though. Okay. So (laughs) sports made the Marine Corps, (laughs) sports made the Marine Corps easy AF. Explain to me (laughs) why sports made the Marine Corps easy as expletive. why Why do you say that? Before I go into why this is my answer, if you're a Marine and you're listening to this, (laughs) high level of college athletics then don't judge or take any defense to what i'm going to (laughs) say it's not lowering what you did or demeaning it it's just saying two truths that i've seen through my life experience that is it so don't go get butt hurt (laughs) 
the Marine Corps, it's do what I say, be here. Everything is completely lined out for you in a day. Literally to be successful, it's like show up in the right uniform of the day and go from there. College athletics, <laughs> my senior year, I took 21 credits, did an internship, and was still a member of our baseball team. Like I was our closer. So I was expected to perform on the field, juggle 21 credits and an internship, and then somehow find time to sleep. And expect to be you in the right boot, uniform. Yeah, and expected <laughs> to like do all this stuff on my own. Now I go into the Marine Corps afterwards, and it's like, you're at boot camp, and you still get eight hours of sleep a day. After the first like two days, you realize, wow, I got up the same time again. Wow, I went to chow at the same time again. Wow, I literally have an, another adult holding my hand through every decision I have to make. College, you don't have that. You mm -hmm. fail, that's on you, and you gotta figure out hundreds of thousands of student loans if you don't have a scholarship. So that's, that's kind of my view of oh, like yeah. the two, and that's why entering the Marine Corps, yeah, it was challenging, but I mean, it, I was being it told, made the transition. You're literally so told, much you're told the you. answers, so just follow instruction. And those are the two very different things. Very interesting, man. I love it. See, when, I, when you wrote that, I mean, I figured you had a reason behind it. And it's not, like you said, I don't think it's disrespectful towards anyone who's serving or anything like that, but it is like it's something that you learned in your life that you were able to translate and actually make that transition a little bit uh, easier. I wouldn't say easier, but like, I mean, it's just. Yeah, a little more you, people, I guess. Sure. I don't know. <laughs> That's all. Almost like you had done the transition already without help, and this was a transition that was like, hey, we'll, we'll show you how. Yeah, here's all your answers. <laughs> Just do what I tell you to do. The, the reason I can kind of understand that is because I always – and I don't, and I try not to be disrespectful towards these people too, but like, I'm just going to have no filter. There were people in my college course. See, I took the, the long route through college to get my degree. I was 28 when I got my bachelor's and, uh, I was working full time and I had a kid my final year. I had a newborn son. I just gotten married to my wife and we, uh, yeah, that was just two years ago. And I remember sitting there, like I was literally waking up at five o'clock every morning. I'd go to work. I'd go to school, come back to work to finish my eight hours and then go to night classes. So I was getting up at five, getting home at 1030, rinse and repeat every single day. And I remember this, uh, this person, I will not say gender, but this individual in my class was complaining because they were about to graduate and they didn't know what they were going to do. And they were, they were frustrated because they didn't have enough time and they weren't going to be able to make enough money that they wanted to make and this and this and this and none of the jobs they've been looking at. Uh, we're going to pay more than $35,000 a year and blah, blah, blah. So there was all complaints and they were complaining about time. I'm like, dude, are you kidding me? When you get out of college, well, maybe they didn't because they weren't used to it. But I was like, I've been working my butt off. I can't wait till I just have a job. When I just have a job, I'm going to have all the time in the world. That's, and that's how I was able to start my podcast on the side and do all my stuff because I was like, dude, I know the grind. Like apparently you didn't do it right. If you do, if you do things right, then the rest of life comes a little bit easier. I don't know. So that's how I felt kind of a similar situation, but not the Marine Corps. I was just talking about going to the marketing game. What's up, John? <laughs> Before we move on real quick, I just want to say this. I did graduate college and part of the decision to join the Marines was like, I can't find a job. So without the Marine Corps, I wouldn't be where I am now in life, and I am super grateful for it. Did I re-enlist and stay in? No, but I am grateful for my time in, if that makes it sound yeah. better. That's, uh, is, it, is that how you guys met? Is through, like, did you meet before you went to the Marines? No, so we met during my time in the Marine Corps. Um, I went home on leave. It was Valentine's Day. My parents didn't know I was coming home, so they went out on their date, and I'm literally just drinking on the couch, hanging out with my dogs. And Tinder, I'm like, damn, like she's looking good. <laughs> Swipe right. I was like, oh, damn, matching. All right, game on. Um, messenger, I'm like, hey, you're way too pretty to stay single for long. Here's my phone number. I'm like, that's enough texting for tonight and drinking. Like, let's not <laughs> drunk text. Put the phone upstairs on my charger. I come up a few hours later to see, like, wow, my phone is blown up. Who are these texts from? And it's her. You want to take it from here? Yeah. So um, when he sent me his phone number, I was immediately like shocked because one, I was like, holy crap, this guy is hot. And then I was like, there's no way this guy's going to talk to me. And um, when he sent me his number, it was an 845 area code. So again, keep in mind, he's, 
was stationed in North Carolina, visit his parents in South Carolina. So I'm in South Carolina at the time within that area. Cause this is when Tinder was like, you have to be within the radius. Right. And so you know, wait, hang on. You know that it changed. Angelina. Oh yeah. Good save. Oh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so going back, um, I was in South Carolina. He was in South Carolina. He had an eight, four, five area code. That is a New York telephone number. And I am originally from New York with an 845 area code. So I was like, what part of New York are you from? <laughs> like, where, you know, where did you where go did to you school? Go like, school? I mean, I was like blowing his phone up. And so he did not text back. He called me. We talked before on the phone. We talk, before we get to this point, I had been drinking for a few hours. <laughs> Valentine's <laughs> night. So Wait. I'm reading this like, what, the, what is going on here? And then that's why I called. So he called and the first thing he said, he said, which one of my friends put you up to this? And I'm like, dude, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm from Montgomery. Where are you from? He's like Middletown. We are from the same, like a town that is five minutes away from each other. He went to Catholic school. I went to public school and I moved down. My parents moved me. I was in the middle of eighth grade. He finished school through high school there, but went to college and his parents retired in South Carolina. So we literally are from the same town in New York. And then we met each other down in South Carolina. What the On heck? Tinder. <laughs> That's super sick, dude. Yeah. <laughs> we have a very different Tinder story. <laughs> yeah, very good. That that that's your origin story right there. That's what's gonna sell. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> we that. said we said we needed to be like a Tinder commercial for people. <laughs> yeah, we did. Hey, they, okay, drop that in here. Did you guys, yeah, hear that advertisement right there? There we go. I thought I was about to have to play Doctor Phil for a second there when he was like, <laughs> "How do you know about that?" Um, <laughs> that's freaking cool, guys. Good job. That's awesome. That's. It was supposed to happen. That's how that's, I don't know. Everything happens for a reason. That's that uh, cliche saying, but I actually think that's true. So let's, let's talk about this real quick. As we're kind of getting into the end of the interview, I kind of want to talk to you guys about business. So we, obviously it's a sports podcast and my whole idea of this podcast is to show people that, that athletes are not dumb jocks. They're not just stupid jocks that, that, that whole thing. Oh, they're just dumb jocks. No, 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 no. And I think you guys are proving it right now. This is super cool. To have you guys on the show because it's a power couple and you can see that you're both highly intelligent. It's not a, it's not a dumb jock. You've learned tons of leadership qualities, uh, relationship stuff. Now explain to me this, how has that helped you guys transition into the business world? Like what have you learned in the business world now that you're kind of starting your own thing um, and, and kind of explain that and maybe touch base on what you guys got going on, but like how have sports and your background there helped you with your business and, and going through maybe the hardships of the business and getting it launched and whatever. You want to start? Yeah, I'll start in the beginning and probably throughout the life of this business and what we're, where we're going to take it. There are going to be speed bumps. And since I've been home the past, like, two, two and a half weeks now, it's been speed bump after speed bump after speed bump. And instead of getting upset about it, we've been like, all right, let's fix it. Like, don't come to me with a problem without a solution. And that's what we've done for each other. So in those two and a half weeks, we've hit so many obstacles. Like I can't count, but we've already gotten all over all of them because we didn't stop. We just kept finding ways and ways to get it done. I think that all kind of ties in with sports. Yeah. And in business. So I was in, while, while he was in the Marines, I was in the medical field for the past seven years and I'm a medical scribe. I call, so funny thing, I call myself a utility player in the medical <laughs> field. So I am a right. medical scribe, a certified clinical medical assistant. And I lastly was also a general supervisor of a high complexity lab. So when people ask me, they're like, what do you do? I'm like, well, oh, I'm a utility player for the medical field. Whatever you need me to do, I got you. So I, I really came to find that entrepreneurship was more my route. I, I really wanted to live my life, live on our time, um, and just do what I wanted to do. And a big thing that John said all the time is like, I did not marry you to spend my time away from you. Like we are married so that we can spend our time together and enjoy things together. So as I left the medical field and we, we got into this entrepreneurship, we started this business called the Come Home Project and helping other military couples, whether they are just a couple or a spouse, you know, active or retired, you know, separated. There are way too many suicide rates and way too many divorce rates to even count. And the fact that it's still rising is ridiculous. And so we appreciate the 22 push-ups. We do because it, it makes its notice, but we are about action. And as 
you know, athletes, we are like, okay, great. You can do, you can field a ground ball, but can you field the ground ball, throw to first base and get the out? Can you take the action? And so we are building this business to truly take the action and help couples love themselves, let, let them love themselves and understand who they are and then better grow themselves as a couple. So that's really, I think, when you take sports and transition into business, it's, it's been a transition. And every single transition, like John has said, has been a speed bump. But we have overcome these obstacles and we continue to strive through them. And we're just going to teach people exactly what we're doing. Yeah, like you might come home physically from a deployment, but it's getting you mentally and emotionally back. So that when you actually come home, you are home. And that's the main goal of all yeah. of this. Mm -hmm. That's the that, come that's so freaking cool. Where, where can we find information on this that you guys got going on? So we have just launched our Facebook community group. Um, so it's come home project on Facebook and just go ahead and, you know, invite yourself and by other people. We just launched it about just about two weeks ago when John got home. Um, and we have about 150 members in there. We're going live at least twice a week, just teaching you about communication and emotion. And we, we like to say that, uh, a, a slogan of ours is together we are a crew and it's communication, relationships, emotion, and wellness. And we're kind of going through that throughout the month. So each week is a different, you know, um, pillar that we have that we've been working through for our entire marriage. And we just want to teach other people that they can do the same thing. Guys, I love it. Oh my gosh. Okay. So for anyone listening to this, make sure that you're checking out the uh, link. I'll put the link down here in the description when we have this uh, published so that they can see your Facebook group. Um, now do they need to go to a website? Like, is there a website here to pay into? Like, I want to know kind of like what the, the end goal is for you guys. Is it going to be more of a marriage consulting or what, what, what is it like exactly? So our end goal right now, I, we're working towards a lot of goals right now. We launched our Facebook group so that we can build a community right. and that is already growing rapidly. And we are so excited about it. And when one of the speed bumps we have been dealing with this past week and a half is that um, we our basics of what we wanted are not where we want them to be. So there is a website that is coming soon, thecomehomeproject.com. So it's not anything different than what we're doing. And that is where you're going to hear about us. We are going to launch a membership, a VIP membership for couples together. And we are putting together about $49.99 a month which is super reasonable. And we try to think about, okay, as a couple, you go out to eat and you tip and it could be about $50 and that's about a max. What we're planning to do is give you live training from John and I. We're going to bring in experts, marriage counselors, PTSD counselors, and really bring them and teach people how to you know, utilize this kind of information. We're going to do meetups here in the San Diego area. We want to be able to... Um, give out newsletters and PDFs and things like that. So there's a lot coming. And then on top of that, we are planning to do one-on-one -on -one and group coaching for the Come Home Project and just go through a four to five week program so that the couple can do it together and really dig deep into who they are as the individual and then as a couple themselves. Wow, dude, you guys know, <laughs> you guys have put a plan together. That's super cool put a plan and you're like executing that plan, which is yeah. Yeah. And like things, things are like falling into place. Like the, within the last two weeks, like it's been speed bump. And then like, boom, we like fly to the next level. And, um, at, we got interviewed just what uh, Saturday? Saturday, Saturday, we are going to be featured in a book that is being published by a, rel a relationship expert and a Nobel, someone who's up for the Nobel prize right now, a doctor and who works specifically on um, basically traumatic brain injuries. And it doesn't have to be a trauma, but you know, PTSD, anxiety, um, sex trafficking, um, trauma, like so many different things. And it is mind blowing to watch his work. And now we get to be a part of his book where they are talking about military couples and military families and the transitions they've gone through. I was connected with someone and the last per the last people that they were looking for was a couple who was in their twenties and we just connected and aligned and everything was working out. And now here we are on your podcast and it's just like everything is falling into place perfectly. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about guys. Super cool. 
This is what, and I told all the listeners here at the beginning, this is a power couple. You guys want to learn something from them. Okay. Like, like I said before, these athletes, they're not dumb jocks. They're putting stuff together. Look at these Sam and John are putting together a plan. They're putting a, a game plan and they're executing it. And then when there's speed bumps, they make an audible boom and they execute again. And then they make another audible boom and execute again. Sometimes that's what happens. And uh, you guys are doing awesome. I'm going to be sharing this with all the people that I can. So I'll put links down here in the description for the show. Um, and I'll make sure to share it on Facebook as well so they can get it. Uh, I, I already know people that I'm, I'm, I got them pulling up on Facebook right now uh, that I know I'm going to be sharing this with because I've got a friend of mine here who, who hosts his own local podcast here in Boise, but he is a uh, former military uh, I think he served two times in Iraq. I'm not 100% sure if it was two or three, but uh, he's got the Shot at Dawn project that he's working on, which is for veteran suicide and stuff. So yeah, he's he's got this whole thing going on, and uh, I think you guys have a, a solid backing, and there's people that are going to support you guys. So I'm going to share it with some people and let them know. So I appreciate you guys. Appreciate you guys joining the show, and uh, hope everybody liked this episode. This is super cool. It's a first for me to have a power couple, and you guys rock. So thank you so much. No thank problem. You. Thank you for thank having you. us. For sure. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed that one. Super awesome story. Super awesome couple. And I wish them nothing but the best moving forward. So make sure to check them out. Again, check the links here in the description so you can see what they've got going on. Um, they're going to be doing some big things. And again, if you want to get an audiobook, you know, for free, check out audibletrial.com slash the game time guru. That's audibletrial.com slash the game time guru. And you can get your free trial for audible and get some audio books and listen to them. Also make sure that you are checking out the new PodCoin app. So if you want to listen and get paid to listen to podcasts, especially this show, you can get paid to do so through the PodCoin app. Go find the game time guru there. It's free. So go check it out. Appreciate you guys. You know, the drill we will be here every Friday. So, uh, we'll talk to you next week. Guys, thanks so much for listening to another episode of my show. Now, if you could go and do me a favor, head over to iTunes, give me five stars and leave me a review. It'd be greatly appreciated. Thanks guys. Appreciate your support.